pull this up, you have to hit the blue arrow or the preview live. You hit preview live, right? You want this to go over here. I don't know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Leave this. Just don't touch nothing. Preview is here. Live is over here. Yeah. So the so blue you arrow just makes it back. No, not this. You push it. If you touch it. Don't push the arrow. Twenty-four lives. Okay, let let them log on. Let them log on. You know we're live. Just a minute. Check. Microphone check. One, two. What is this? All right. We can. Some people say this is serious business. We are about ready to start this bad boy up. Game. Bad. in the building. Wow, you sound really good. Huh? You sound good. Sound good? We Very got clear. it great. I love that mic. Huh? I love that mic. Chicago, it's your man Mays Jackson, getting ready to go live, live, live from the What's In It For The Black People Studios. We are loading, trying to get this bad boy going. Y'all ready? I see you all out there. Let's get this thing cracking. Uh, I am about ready to go live. Network sir. Y'all see that? Let's close. Yeah, USB. 
Link device. Do you have to Bluetooth it? Huh? Link device. Well, let's come back down and let's go back now. Where you see Bluetooth? You uh, just go back to you. I think I'll be Bluetooth. Like link device. Do your thing. Why don't you put a picture up there? Go to the photo. Find one. That mic. Yeah. That sample. Option. Yeah, Facebook Live. 
if you head to the Maze Jackson page on Facebook Live, then you should, um, you will be able to check out season one. Let me tell you guys what, I'm looking at this, why don't you tighten up the camera, bring it in just a little bit closer because the shot is too, too wide right now. So bring it in and Greg, you can just take the camera, you use the, uh, on the side. So y'all bear with us because this is our very first time doing this podcast. But if you look at the screen, there is a circle on the side and if you move it up and down, it slides and it's the zoom on the, on the pre screen. All right, y'all. So uh, we're going to let you know that we're going to be launching watch parties. So you'll be able to see episode uh, season one of Illinois Minotti, as well as season, uh, you'll see season one of Illinois Minotti, as well as seasons one and two of Poly Sci. Now, what I would do is be when I, before I switch cameras, Greg, mm -hmm. what I would do if I was you is I would go to a steady shot and then switch the camera and then come back to it because you're watching the switches live, right? So when oh, you're moving it and you're changing the camera around. And what I'm going to do is let's bring that camera just around just a little bit so we're not showing this open door over here. All right, y'all, bear with us because this is our first live podcast. Uh, we are doing this live as well as video. So some of you all will be hearing it. Some of you all will be viewing it. But what the, but the fact of the matter is you are going to get real information. People are asking me, Maze, what made you decide to do the Illinois Minority podcast all over again? But let me do this. Before we do it, let me stop you because we got to take care of some housekeeping. All right, can we take, some, take care of some housekeeping real quick before we get into this? All right, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go and like the Maze Jackson page. A lot of you follow the page, but I need you to go to the page and like the page as well as sign up for notifications. I also need you to go to the What's In It For The Black People page and like that as well. I need you to follow me on Twitter. That's at Maze Jax, M-A-Z-J-A-C, and follow me at Maze Jackson Said on Instagram. All right, y'all. So here we are again, and um, I'm gonna, you know what? I guess I'm gonna just break, get right down into it. Uh, season one ended up, season one of Illinois Minotti ended early. Can we bring that shot in tighter? I don't like the whole look of me in the like the whole shot. I would like a fake, like a head shot, like maybe chest up. Figure that out. All right, so I decided, y'all, to end season one a little bit early because I thought the developments would break at a quicker pace. Now, one of the things that I am hearing right now is that uh, there may be a series of federal indictments coming down tomorrow. Now, I know you guys are like, whatever, because we hear that every other week. We hear that every other week, but it seems like things are starting to cook. Um, but I ended season one early because I thought the developments would break at a much faster pace. I mean, we had Danny Solis, we had Mike Madigan, we had uh, Ed Burke, Victor Reyes, all caught on federal wiretap, and Burke had even been charged. But things started to get quiet. Switch to a solid shot. Then move the camera. Right. I'm, in the, I'm in the preview. I'm doing this in preview. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, y'all getting the behind the scenes. Look, <laughs> this is our first thing. So, you know, we're going to save this podcast because it's going to be great. Uh, but when things got quiet and even slowed down to a halt until they sped up again. Now, the indictments came down, plea agreements were revealed, and by reviewing the associated documents, um, combined with my personal knowledge of the situation, I decided that it was time to bring the podcast back. I decided that it was time to bring the podcast back. Are we not recording anymore? No, we did. Were I recording on this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I decided it was time to bring the podcast back. Y'all let me rewind that. Run that, run that, that back. Morning, so let me run that right back. All right, so I decided, so in case you all don't know, I decided to relaunch the, pod, the podcast because I started season one thinking that things would move a lot faster. Unfortunately, they didn't. Um, We actually heard that uh, Ed Burke might not even be 
uh, start his case for a whole nother year. So it is really the, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, the fact of the matter is that within a whole nother year, we won't hear from the Ed Burke case. But things started to speed up. Things started to speed up and now uh, it is time to start back to bring, I decided to bring the podcast back. All right, so it's a new year, new season, so let's get into it. But so we are 100% clear. The content contained is not meant to be factual, but it's purely speculation, rumor, and based on innu- innu- innuendo, some personal, some, some of my personal knowledge, some information contained in court documents, filings, as well as confidential sources and interpretations. Let me do this. I'm going to take a moment. Why don't we go to the solid state script, right? Take a moment, and then we're going to come back in a hot second. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. This is Illinois Monotony. What's going on? The audio is coming from here. Why? I'm recording. You sound great on the podcast. What do you mean the audio is coming from here? The mic I'm picking up the most is closer to me. You sound far, so it's not any of those. Hmm? But that's because you're listening on Facebook Live. Right. I'm talking about Facebook Live. This is what the audience is listening to. And I feel it's coming from this source. So I don't know if you could adjust, adjust the volume. The or if you have your Yeah, or you have your speaker. You know what I'm saying? Because it seems to be good. Because so I'm loud with the, with and the clear. Mic, the mic not picking up? Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's two different camera? recordings going on. Three, two, one, let's go back. Are we back? You sound better. All right, so we are now officially back. I hope that those technical adjustments have been made and we are all good. You are tuned into season one, excuse me, season two, episode one of Illinois the podcast. All right, so I'm going to get into it. This is a new year, new season. But so one more time. So we are 100% clear. The content contained is not meant to be factual, uh, but is purely speculation and rumor. Based on innuendo and some personal knowledge, uh, information contained in court documents, some filings, confidential sources, as well as uh, interpretation. This show is for political inders, uh, political insiders who really want to understand what is really going on um, behind the scenes. It's for political insiders, and if it's not for political insiders, it's for Illinois residents who have been getting shafted by the system. Now, I'll present the information with my spin, but you make the call. You make the call. Tonight's episode, Marty and the Mole is the story of how the federal government used uh, a greedy state senator and a controversial company to snare, to bring down the West Suburban uh, division of the Illinois Monarch. So let's talk about this because what we also want to do is talk about how we turn, how Illinois legislators turn crisis into cash from controversial companies. Now, tonight's episode, we'll talk about what happened with Safe Speed, who I do consult for. And I want to be clear, y'all. Y'all know I do do consulting for Safe Speed. However, I am not here speaking on behalf of Safe Speed. Um, And I have not been authorized to speak on their behalf. But I think they are the perfect example of a pattern that we see in Illinois. A pattern that we see in Illinois where our elected officials turn crisis for controversial companies into cash. 
That stated, I think this is the perfect place to restart the Illinois Minati Pack podcast. So, unless you've been under a rock, then you've heard the story of representatives of the red light camera company, Safe Speed, being accused of paying off elected officials. Since then, you've heard a series of news stories, legislation, lawmaker railings, and nonstop coverage. But the mass the masses are outraged, the politicians want blood, and the cam and the same camera company that they solicited for hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign contributions are now the companies that they are threatening to put out of business. And how convenient is it that the scapegoat is a black owned company? But I'll leave that for a whole, whole, whole nother incident. Let's start with uh, what seemed like an open and shut case. Blame the evil red, cam red light camera company, and of course they would bribe, of course, of course people would believe that they would bribe uh, elected officials to get business, to build the citizens. But that's not how it works. What the legislature, what the legislators and people would like for you to do is to under is to feel like it's that simple. But if you know, if you and I know that it's never, never, never that simple. Uh, people know it happens, but very rarely can they prove what happens. Uh, so guess what? In this case, Safe Speed became the perfect foil for a legislator seeking to turn a crisis into cash. But to understand that, to understand how this whole thing works, the first thing you have to do is understand the concept the concept of a fetcher bill. A fetcher bill. Now, ironically, y'all, I'm going to tell you, ironically, I learned about a fetcher bill sitting outside the office of State Senator Marty Sandoval. Is that crazy? Now, for some of y'all, y'all don't know that I used to lobby down in Springfield. And so if you don't know that I lobbied in Springfield, part of the reason that this story is so, so I have so much insight is because, quite frankly, I was living through a lot of the things that were happening, um, but I didn't really realize exactly what was going on. Well, as I see this federal investigation unfold, I've learned a lot, and so I've decided that I'm going to share it with you. We're going to start today with the concept of the Fetcher Bill. Are you guys ready? I don't think y'all ready. I I'm think, ready. Now, I'm going to tell y'all. Y'all, I don't know if y'all ready. See, here's the thing. The thing is, when I start telling you this stuff, there's a bunch of people all over the city, county, and state who say, Maze, you can't say that. You can't tell people that. And I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you. Now, it's crazy because people say, well, why would you say all of that stuff? Well, let me be clear. Um, it is because I want our people to be free. So, as I said before, ironically, the first time I learned about a Fetcher bill was sitting outside of Senator Sandoval's corner office in the state capitol. I wasn't always welcomed into the biggest meetings, but from what I could ascertain and what I was told by the lobbyist who was on the, another lobbyist who was on the inside with Senator Sandoval, every year at the beginning of the year, Senator Sandoval would sit down with his two favorite lobbyists and they would sit down and create what was known as the Fetcher Bills. Now, you all ask me, Mays, what is a Fetcher Bill? These were legislative bills that were meant to fetch business and clients for the lobbyists. Essentially, as it was explained to me, they would look at a list of controversial business, controversial clients, and that is key. You gotta understand that the companies that they target were controversial because there's nobody that really cares about trying to help them. Dig, red light camera company, uh, it's a company that nobody likes, and so if they get in trouble, there's nobody to save them, right? So, what would happen is, they would, and I'm, I'm gonna use safe speed in this case, but what you'll see is this pattern, is the pattern that has been replicated in almost every case that we have watched that has come out of Springfield. So, what happened was, the lobbyists would go into a room with the senator, these two lobbyists, will remain nameless. But I do want to let you all know that today, uh, before we close out this show, we will provide 
some insight as to who we believe is the federal mold. Mm. Uh, and I'll tell you, that this is going to be, yeah, I need to help you understand the reason I'm doing this. I'm doing this because, well, there's a few reasons I'm doing this, but one of the things is because so many times our story, the real story, is not being told. The story that the press likes to tell is the story that sounds sexy. They very rarely like to tell the story the way that it is. And so, I, because oftentimes the press doesn't really know the story, they are really taking what the spinmeisters tell them. Well, guess what? I used to be one of those spinmeisters. So I'm going to unspin this bad boy, and we are about to tell you how it all goes down. Now, we were talking about the concept of the Fetcher Bill. And as I told you, as it would explain to me, the lobbyists and the, and the senator would go into a room where they would look at a list of clients of people that were controversial businesses. In this case, Safe Speed. And try to figure out laws and legislation that they could pass that would force Safe Speed to have, or their controversial company, to have to come to them. So what would happen is they would propose bills and laws that would adversely affect the company. And then what would happen is the company would get all in a panic and say, what do we need to do to stop this? Because they would, you know, just like you're hearing right now, people are talking about creating laws to ban red light cameras, which then forces people, which forces then the, lob the companies to hire lobbyists. Ding, 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 ding. Remember the lobbyists went in the room with the legislator to propose laws that would then force them to come down? Hence, they fetched them down. And once the, once, and once the company realized that they were in trouble, mysteriously, or sometimes not so mysteriously, uh, the affected companies would be given a, the name or a suggestion of lobbyists that they can hire that might might be able to save them. Now, the way that worked is once hired, once the, the business finds the lobbyist, then the lobbyist goes in and negotiates a retainer. In the case of this, this retainer might be somewhere in the realm of ten to $15,000 per month for the lobbying company. But it's more important for the lobbying company to be in the business because not only did the lobbyist get the retainer, but they would also then get an inside look at the company. And they could look at inside and see the operations, assess how much money the company was actually making, and then figure out how they could plunder that company for their friends, family, lawyers, business associates, et cetera. It almost is like, and it, it is almost like an episode of The Sopranos. I don't know if you all remember the episode of Sopranos where the guy got into debt with Tony Soprano and he owned a sporting goods store and they figured out how to shake him down and they destroyed his company. Well, it's very much the same way, except for the goal is to keep the company propped up because why do you want the cop company to keep be propped up and stay alive? Because then you can keep making the retainers. Right? The law lobbyists make the retainers. Their friends get to make all of these great suggest uh, make all of the money in a variety of different ways. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's all perfectly legal. It was all perfectly legal. Uh, and I want to step back because I'm a lobbyist. Right? And I want to be clear with you because I don't ever want you to be surprised. So I am a lobbyist. And there's two different kinds of lobbying. What you heard happen here are, was created and manufactured crises to create economic opportunities for specific individuals. Now, there are real issues in every single day legislators in Springfield passed. Every single day, legislators pass real-time laws and propose ideas to make life better for citizens. So I want to be clear that every time you see a law, it is not because some legislator is trying to shake down people. But when you look at what's happening right now, 
And when you look at the Sandoval case, you find you are seeing that legislators were proposing laws for the goal of specifically shaking down controversial companies. Now, I want to be clear. So, I, you know, to my in-studio audience, is this making sense to you? Yes. yes. Is it making sense? Okay, so I just want to make sure. And to everybody that's listening and watching online, please stop me. We have people looking, but let me know if you have questions. I will do questions and answers at the end. But I want to make sure that everybody is clear about the concept of the Fetcher Bill. Now, let me tell you. The crazy thing is um, it's complicated and it's easy to bash, but I always want to be honest with you. But let me go back to the Fetcher Bill, what, which works even better as it worked in the case of Senator Sandoval and his accomplices because what wound up happening in their case was there was an unwitting senator who proposed a law to ban red light cameras to safe speed, right? So what wound up happening was that they didn't have to use their Fetcher bill to get the company on the hook because there was another state senator who unknowingly did their dirty work by proposing a bill to ban red light cameras. Well, what then happened was Senator Sandoval and his accomplices moved from the Fetcher bill to becoming protectors. So you know how it works. You know what I'm saying? You know somebody is out to get you, so you pay the guy that you know won't get you. So the so basically what the lobbyists did was say, hey guys, if you work with us, we'll get Senator Sandoval to be your protector. Now, remember the lobbyists are key because the lobbyists have the ability to get inside of the company, see it from the inside, and then go back and tell their friends what's going on. So what happened was, in the case of Safe Speed, uh, the lobbyists used the other legislator to be the bad guy, and then what they did was got hired they having a working relationship with Senator Sandoval, they then said, Sandoval is the chairman of the committee, we want you to sit on the bill. Now, in a grand world, in a great time, that would be great if you were being honest. But at that point, they realized that they could now rape, rob, and pillage the company. Why? Because there was no bill that was actually moving, but the company didn't know that and they were scared. So what the lobbyists then do is go to the company and request legal campaign contributions. But not only do they request legal campaign contributions, they max out for all of their friends. So let me give you an example. Think about it like this. You know how you find a lick? You know if you know what a lick is and you tell all your friends you got a sweet lick and you say, man, you come over here, you can get you some too? Well, essentially what they wound up doing to Safe Speed was they went, they took the company and they asked the company to make a $20,000 donation, which was completely legal. The company, if you're trying to save your business, you just say, oh, is that legal? Whatever's legal, I'll do whatever it takes. And so what they did was they got their guy Sandoval 20 grand in campaign contributions. Now, let me be clear. 20 grand in campaign contributions in Springfield is a big deal, particularly if you're not a if you're not the speaker. But Sandoval's problem was the 20 grand wasn't good enough for him because it went to his campaign account. He wanted the money to go into his pocket. And so where this whole thing broke down was because the lobbyists, the Sandoval went around the lobbyists and went direct to the federal informant because Sandoval was known for being jealous of his lobbyist co-conspirators and would also often go to their clients and try to figure out other and alternative ways to get money from them. At least that's what's alleged. All right, y'all. So, does everybody, are y'all, have y'all, are y'all keeping up with me? Is this, is this making sense or am I going to, am I low? Okay. okay. So, now what you have found out is so now the lobbyists have now got safe speed over a barrel. 
They have got they have got the perfect scenario. They've got a company that's trying to save themselves. They've got a, a bill in Springfield proposed by an unknown, unwitting state legislator who has no idea about their conspiracy. They then leverage Senator Sandoval as the chairman of the committee. They leverage him to stop the bill. Now, the red light camera company doesn't know that, they're, that the fix is already in. And so every week the lobbyists are coming to them saying, you got to give us money. You got to make a legal campaign contribution to this person. You got to make a con contribution to this person. And what does the camp company do? They keep shelling out money because what is the lob what are the lobbyists doing? They, they found a sweet lick. And they are trying to share them with all their friends. Got it? It's essentially they are running a train on this company. Does, does, maybe is that graphic enough for you? Does that make sense? Yeah, I know what that is. I hope y'all know what that is. All right. So, so now, inside, but now what happens is, remember, the company is now trying to figure out how to save themselves. Now, I want to I wanna help you all understand. The lobbyists are now shaking down the company, but they're all able to do this all with inside the bounds of the law. Why are they able to do this inside the boundaries of the law? Because they help write the laws. They help write the laws. And the legislators write the laws so that they can be able to participate in this process. The problem came when the legislator gets greedier than the lobbyist. And that is what happened in the case of Sandoval. And so let's recap because I want to make sure we're all clear on the same page because then I got to bring this thing home. The Fetcher bill was planned by Senator Sandoval and his preferred lobbyists. The value add came when Senator Sandoval didn't have to propose the, le the Fetcher bill because another legislator who genuinely wanted to do the work who was a proposed a law that Sandoval and his lobbyist buddies could use as a way in to take to, to rape, rob, and pillage the company. Now remember, key to this is the company needs to be a controversial company, right? It's hard to do this to AT&T or IBM, but it's much easier to do it to a company that nobody likes, right? You can get over on the red light camera company. You can get over on the video gaming companies. You can get over on the sweepstakes companies. Why? Because nobody likes those companies. And so it's hard to defend. So the way that they defend themselves is in a legislative process. Now, the lobbyist then gets hired by the controversial company for a monthly retainer, sometimes upwards of ten dollars to $15,000 a month. Then, they once they're in, they distribute the wealth between their friends, family, and everybody that they think can make some money from this company and the machine rolls on. Now can I tell y'all what? With Senator Sandoval, this was the worst kept secret in Springfield. It was one of those things where everybody knew. And can I go back, cause I wanna tell y'all. Senator Sandoval, I consider Senator Sandoval a friend, right? I'm gonna tell you, he used to talk to me all the time about stuff and he was bold with it, but I just thought, I just thought he was joking because he was so damn bold with it. But now, I got to ask. So here's, there's a lot of questions that I got in this because everybody knew about this kind of thing with Sandoval. It was like people would come into the Senate and walk down the hall and they would try to sneak past the corner because they knew that if he saw you, he was going to pull you in and he was going to make you work, right? So I got to ask myself, why does the Senate president put this guy in this spot? That's first. Knowing this and the rumors of it. But we'll leave that because the Senate president has since retired. Resigned in the wake of all this. But then, the feds know all of this is happening. But how can they prove it? Now back up. You want to know how do the feds know that all this is happening? Short term. It's the federal informant that I will talk about a little bit later on tonight. But in the long term, 
I believe that the way that the feds found out about this goes all the way back to Operation Hired Truck. When the federal informant that didn't go to jail during Hired Truck scandal is still a major player in all of everything. Let me just tell you, the guy, is, the, the person that I really think set this up has been, is is connected to every single person that has been indicted, but that's for, or been investigated, but that's a whole nother story. I say that for another episode. We're going to stick here. The feds needed a legitimate way to catch Sandoval, who, who by now everybody is saying dirty, and they knew it, but again, he kept getting appointed to the position. Enter now who I allege is the federal informant. Now, this is where it gets good, guys. This is where it gets good. It gets good. This federal, this alleged federal informant was who we thought, many people thought, was a young Italian mover and shaker and businessman. They thought he was. He bragged that he was best friends with one of the most clouded municipal lawyers in the western suburbs. And he used that to get into a variety of business relationships, uh, partnerships, and companies. One of which was Safe Speed, but one of, another of which was Presidio Capital. Now, that clouded lawyer, we'll have to talk about him at another date. Because he's not really come up in all of this stuff. And see, here's the thing, guys. I'm telling you stuff that you're not going to see in the papers because they don't know it yet. You dig? You're not going to see it on the news yet. You're going to say two years later, man, Mays told us, and you're going to rewind this. Just like when I wrote this story about the Illinois Minotti four years ago and told you about all the people that are being indicted as we speak right now. But, and so let's, let's take a pin and stick it in there because we've got two co-conspirator lobbyists who've yet to be named. We also have a clouded West Suburban Municipal lawyer who has connected the federal informant to all of the mayors that we have seen go down. Right? And now we have this same, and then we have the young person who has been claiming him as best friend, as his best friend, pretending to be Italian when he's not really. So y'all, we got a real sordid tale going on right now. Right? And I think it's going to play out real ugly in a whole other way, but we'll let that be. So we'll have to watch the lawyer and we'll have to watch the lobbyist. But right now we're going to get back to the federal informant. See, the thing is, as you read the paper and everybody's been getting whipped up and talking crazy about safe speed, no one really took the time to read the story. And if you take the, read, take the time to read the story, then you'll understand. Because see, the, fat, the young, what am I hearing? The young cloud.